false truth. Live from the booth, always this other than proof. She bring it to you, words of encouragement. With the funny twist, it features so like it's nourishment. While you're listening, I hope you catch a feeling, cause Tina talks truth about hope, truth and healing. Welcome to Tina Talks Truth Show. I'm Tina Levine, your host. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I go to the grocery store, I just feel this void. And, and I buy groceries, and I buy this, and I buy that, and I try to stuff that void. And sometimes I just have this emptiness, and, and the next thing I know, the Oreos are all gone. Uh, I try to stuff this void and this emptiness, and... Um, Unfortunately, the only way that I could fill this void or the emptiness is with Jesus and his salvation and his love. Today's guest is the director of Steve McQueen, American Icon. This movie is epic. It is incredible. Steve McQueen's life, it just depicts on how he had this void, he had this emptiness, that he wanted to fill it with um, cars and um, uh, movies and girls, and, and he would try to fill that void and that emptiness, but until he actually accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior, then he was able to fill that void because it was a God huge void and emptiness, and only God can actually fill that void. Today's guest is John Irwin, and he is the director of Steve McQue McQueen, American Icon. Steve McQueen set the action movie template for the modern day era of cinema. He's singular, and he was the best at what he did. He was the best Steve McQueen there was. He did have beautiful blue eyes. They were sad eyes. Well, like most people, I've always been a fan of Steve McQueen. Everybody knows he became a big movie star. What some may not know is he was the number one movie star in the world, 2017. He's still an icon, but here's what people don't know about Steve McQueen, the trajectory of his life. He had global fame. He was a heavy drug user, a heavy drinker, and there was a big old hole in Steve McQueen's heart. At a certain point, he disconnected from Hollywood and literally walked away. He didn't want Hollywood anymore. He wanted something else. He was trying to find a life of peace. And a very ordinary man that entered his life that was the perfect person to tell Steve McQueen the answer to the questions he had had from his earliest childhood. And here's the story I want to tell. Steve McQueen became a believer in Jesus Christ toward the end of his life. That is a story very few people know, and that is a story I want to tell in this documentary film. And I'm going to follow Steve's life, and it's going to be a story like people have never seen before. Thank you, John, for being on my show. And I watched the movie; it is incredible. I have so many questions for you. Oh, cool! Yeah, it, you know, it's it's Andy and I have fallen in love with telling true stories. Uh, Woodlawn, our last feature film, was a true story, and and uh, I can only imagine, which is our next uh, feature film, uh, is also a true story. And in the middle is this uh, is this story of Steve McQueen. Uh, you know, the biggest movie star of his day, the highest paid movie star in the world, and come to find out there is this unknown true story of this guy coming to Christ, not because he was dying, uh, uh, but because he, he lacked everything that he, he wanted. It's like he had everything that he wanted, but he la lacked everything that he needed. And he had this hole in his soul, even though he had everything that, that uh, culture would say would make you happy. Uh, you know, he had fame, he had women, he had money, and yet uh, he was missing something and, and he was missing the peace and happiness that he craved. And he went on a spiritual quest at the end of his life to find his redemption that nobody knows about. To the point where I, when I was told the story, 
I was like, did this really happen? Is this really true? And uh, but at the end of the day, Andy and I, it's all about the story and, and how great the story is. And this is an amazing story. I want to talk to you about, you brought up your brother, Andy, and you actually have Irwin uh, Brothers Entertainment, mm -hmm. correct? Right. And so you're not new at this. You actually started with your brother when you were teenagers, is that correct? <laughs> Andy and I uh, began our careers. I was, uh, well, really, when I was 12 and he was 15, we started working at a cable station. And uh, when I was 15, a cameraman got sick for ESPN uh, at a University of Alabama football game about four hours before the kickoff, and I got to take their place by, let's just say, not informing that network of my age or level of experience, uh, and uh, not to say anyone should do that at home. Uh, but uh, but that was the start of a wonderful career, and it was almost like I joined the circus and just fell in love, and, and uh, my dad helped us buy a camera the next year, and since then, it's been a hobby that has just gone completely out of control. And we, for years, we directed music videos and commercials and, and had a, uh, were very successful in that regard. But I was working on another Christian film called Courageous, doing the action sequences, and which is a lot of fun. And uh, the director of that, Alex, asked me, John, what's your purpose and the purpose of your work? And that uh, question lodged deeply into my heart and soul. And not only could I not answer it, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And... Um, and that led to what we're doing now, which is making films that are entertaining, that are emotionally relatable, no matter what you believe, but that showcase the transformational power of the gospel, that this is something that can, that can change your life. And, uh, and we look to true stories to do that. You just can't argue with the truth. And so I, of course, am a Hollywood, uh, you know, an old time Hollywood uh, fan and just the history of the film industry. And I used to watch all these old movies with my dad. We still do today. And one of the movies that we love to watch over and over again was The Great Escape with the legend Steve McQueen, uh, you know, who has since become the king of cool, uh, as he's known by. And, and uh, so it's just a it's, it's it was an honor to tell this story. And I was I was shocked that the story was actually true, that the story was much bigger and much better than I had even uh, ever dreamed. And uh, and we're getting to to. Um, to to bring this story that nobody's heard about this guy, about the redemption at the end of his life. Uh, you know, t to the to the big screen and now uh, to home video. And I love the actors, well, the people that actually share in the movie about Steve McQueen, including his wife, um, yeah. as well as Greg Laurie. And um, also you have Mel Gibson. Yeah, Mel's great. Who uh, was he, just he, awesome because he Mel, brought that whole... Mel did, yeah, Mel did an interview that really only Mel could have done. I mean, Mel has climbed that same ladder as Steve McQueen. And I consider Mel to be one of the masters of the craft of filmmaking and, uh, and a very humble and authentic guy that's, that's been quite a mentor in terms of the, the craft of film to me. And, and he, he did a very authentic interview about the cost of fame and the things that you don't think about, like mm. losing your anonymity and just the, the pressure of it. And, and, uh, and he's a huge McQueen fan. You know, Steve McQueen really invented the modern movie star, you know, and many, many guys like Mel or, or Dennis Quaid that we worked with in Imagine or Kevin Costner, you know, they kind of based their careers off Steve McQueen. And so um, it was kind of cool to, to, to have him involved in this project, as well as another great friend, Gary Sinise, great American and great actor who does the voiceover. And then a lot of people, like uh, even people that hadn't been interviewed, obviously the gem of the project is Barbara McQueen, Steve's widow, mm -hmm. and she was with him during this time, but also Barbara Lee, who dated McQueen and Elvis at the same time. They had nicknames for each other. Uh, uh, Elvis called McQueen the, uh, the, the motorcycle hick, yeah. and, uh, and McQueen called Elvis the, the guitar, guitar hick. hick. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she hasn't been interviewed since 1979. So, uh, uh, and Stan Barrett, the stuntman that doubled him so many times. And it's just a really cool uh, cast of people. And it is kind of a, it's a thrill ride through the golden age of Hollywood, which is a, uh, something I would have loved to have seen with my own eyes. And, and, uh, and yet you get to the end of this, guy's life and you understand this very relatable question which is what really makes you happy and when you have it all and you have nothing what do you do and uh and that creates for a very emotionally relatable experience absolutely it was it was tugging at my heartstrings yeah. but i did love the whole the car aspect of it you know seeing the antique cars and his love of cars as well as his friends and his family oh. but there it was just an overall really great film and that's actually coming out on dvd 
It's coming out on DVD February the 20th. It's out on digital right now. If you have iTunes, I buy all my movies on iTunes now. And uh, but uh, so if you have that or others, uh, you know, Amazon, uh, Vudu, you can uh, you can get it there. Uh, and then on February 20th, it'll be in stores uh, uh, nationwide, uh, uh, Christian bookstores as well as uh, as mainstream bookstores, uh, mainstream stores. And this is pretty cool. Walmart is is uh, really behind it, which is that's a pretty cool thing for a um, you know, for a faith-based documentary for Walmart to be behind it the way that they are. So you can pick it up there on February 20th. Absolutely. And I love the name of his ranch, Last Chance Ranch. Isn't that cool? Yes. It's such a, it's such a, I mean, there were several things that I'm like, is that true? That's almost too good to be true. And one is that, you know, he had this Last Chance Ranch and he had this dream of, of moving there and, and uh, just kind of escaping the industry altogether. And then, you know, the other was that he died with Billy Graham's Bible on mm -hmm. his chest. I thought that can't be true. But indeed, it, it was. And it wasn't just any Bible. I've held this Bible. When he was going down for that last surgery, he really wanted to speak to Billy Graham. And there was a knock on the plane, on the jet, and, and it was Billy Graham. And, uh, wow. and they, they had this moment together, and uh, Graham prayed for him and, and, and talked to him. And, and McQueen had said, because he was going down to Mexico for a surgery, kind of a last-ditch surgery. And, um, and he said, you know, I forgot my Bible. Mm. And, uh, and Billy Graham said, hey, you can have mine. And he gave him his preaching Bible. We've, I've held it. It has all these... Uh, uh, sermon outlines and phone numbers and and he made it through the surgery but he didn't uh, his heart gave out after the surgery when they found him he was literally clutching the Bible mm. of Billy Graham and that's just and it's just this visible symbol of the hope that he was clutching to as he as he uh, you know as he left this world and that's just a that's an amazing thing uh, to me and and there were many of those things in fact one of the things that we discovered because um, Barbara McQueen was so intimately involved with the project Steve's widow. It was a tape of the final interview with Steve McQueen two weeks before he died. And he talks about his faith and he talks about the healing that he found in it. And he talks about, you know, my body's broken, but my spirit isn't broken. Mm -hmm. And this tape has never been heard. The wow. final interview of Steve McQueen has never been heard. And it was fascinating that, uh, that, you know, one of the things he says is he says, I, I think I have something to offer in terms of my relationship with the Lord. I want people to know my story. Because he died, uh, you know, soon after, he was never able to tell it. So in many ways, this film, you know, fulfills uh, one of the dying wishes of an American icon. And that's, that's an amazing thing for me to think about. Absolutely. And so I just want to thank you so much for being obedient to God uh, that you actually fulfilled his one prayer, his last prayer. Well, and that was to you. share the Lord. Well, and it's a team sport. And when you guys see the films, whether it's, McQueen on DVD, or I can only imagine in theaters, when you see the films, we get to keep on making them. And, uh, and we get to, uh, you guys give us the coolest job in the world. And, and really, as Christians, we have enormous opportunities to get the gospel around the world because of technology. And uh, there's more cell phones than people on the earth now. And there's movie, the there's 20 movie theaters opening every day in China. And this is just a way for us to get the message of the gospel out to the world in a very powerful way and, and it's something that we all do together and so I'm, I'm grateful for anyone who sees and supports the films uh you give us an incredible opportunity to to have an amazing job and uh, i kind of pinch myself coming to work every day it's incredible what we get to do oh well thank you so much and we're actually going to be speaking to you in just a minute about i can only imagine movie Great. Uh, but get out get the dvd steve mcqueen american icon go on itunes go on at walmart go anywhere you gotta see this movie it is gonna change your life